found a who had tried to report abuse and run into a stone wall of silence meant to protect the Great Commission. Quote, Miller, now 72, was born into the Southern Baptist world. Her father and grandfather were both pastors. By age 10, she knew she wanted to be a missionary, one of the few leadership opportunities open to women. She and her husband, Ron, were thrilled to be appointed to Malawi in 1978. There she met Jean Kingsley, a missionary since 1960. She visited his house in May 1984, and he hugged her as usual. Then Kingsley, quote, assaulted me quickly and skillfully, pulling me a foot off the floor, continuing to tighten his arms as I struggled, and he groped me until I yelled, commanding him to put me down, Miller said in an email to the Chronicle. Miller, who had worked with sexual predators as a nurse, reported him to other mission personnel. Nothing happened. Two years later, she decided to make a written complaint after learning that others in her mission family also had reported being inappropriately touched or worse. Her complaint went up the chain of command to leaders in Richmond. Kingsley was permitted to resign rather than be terminated. Miller described in interviews and in her book how two other women, as well as a teenage girl, also complained, but said those reports were initially ignored and inadequately investigated. Kingsley died in Texas in 2016. It's pure evil. And when you read all these allegations, it's yeah, pure evil. It's, it's, it's like that they were going to terminate and expose these people. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. The, the thought of somebody that profits makes their career off of being a certain person and positioning themselves within the community in such a way to just be so violent um because mm-hmm. it is violent like they, it's yeah anyway it's yeah, it's, it's ghastly. and it's then a, everybody yeah. that allows for it but just the just the act of ugh, yeah i know it's like you run out of things to say that is new to react to all these horrifying yeah. stories it's it's ungood i would say ungood um, yeah for sure i'm good ungood. very so ungood man we, when you when you read all these allegations in tandem, it, it's very clear what's going on here. Predators have recognized for close to half a century that missions provide them with a steady carousel of people who are isolated from their families and support networks, and that the structure of the mission board means that allegations will be hushed up to avoid fucking with the money or the sacred calling. Um, so obviously, it's a great place to be a predator. And you will also know that these perpetrators tend to be decades-long veteran missionaries. Uh, Miller describes Kingsley as well-practiced, like the way that he abuses her. She says, like, it is, he knew what he was fucking doing, right? This wasn't like a crime of passion. This was a guy who had perfected a method, you know? Um, anyway, you know who else has protect, perfected their methods? To find he- folks at... A company? Sears Roebuck, that's right. That's why Sears is still the most relevant name in Uh department stores. (laughs) That's where you you really want to Buy a Sears now. Yes, buy Sears. UFOs, psychic powers, chemtrails. For years, we've all listened to the Stuff They Don't Want You to Know podcast to get to the bottom of the biggest mysteries in popular culture. And now, hosts Ben Bolin, Matt Frederick, and Noel Brown are separating conspiracy fact from conspiracy theory in the Stuff They Don't Want You to Know book. With cool heads and extensive research, the guys break down the wildest conspiracy theories, from biological testing and the secrets of lobbying to our endless fascination with the Kennedy assassination. The Stuff They Don't Want You to Know book is smart, witty, and it's written in the same conversational style you love from the podcast. Plus, it's packed with some amazing illustrations. If you're looking for a book that explains the unexplainable and uses truth as a weapon against ignorance, misinformation, and lies, this is it. The Stuff They Don't Want You to Know book is available now. Order today at StuffYouShouldReadBooks.com or wherever you buy your books. I'm Curtis Fitzsimmons Jackson. And I'm Charlie Webster. Listen to the podcast Surviving El Chapo, the incredible true story of Jay and Pete Flores, the twin brothers from Chicago who built America's biggest drug trafficking empire. My brother and I, we probably easily pushed over 130, 140 tons since 1998. In the pantheon of drug prosecutions in the history of the Northern District of Illinois, this case stands at the highest level. Jay and Pete went on to become El Chapo's right hand men. Chapo really liked us. They, they liked us. They looked at us like their sons and treated us like family. This story made international news because they are the reason El Chapo is now in prison and they've never spoken. Publicly until now. My brother had the only legal recording of Chapo's mom they ever had. Listen to Surviving El Chapo, the twins who brought down a drug lord, on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. America is obsessed with true crime stories. Everywhere you go, you hear people talking about their favorite true crime podcasts, and all that excitement has made you a little crime curious. But with so many true crime podcasts to choose from, the real mystery is where do you start? iHeart Podcast has cracked the case. They created iHeart True Crime Plus, your source for the best true crime podcasts all in one channel. iHeart True Crime Plus brings you the best of true crime with shows that cover everything from unsolved murders and missing persons to heists, organized crime, and everything in between. So you're sure to find something you'll want to binge and share. And as an iHeart True Crime Plus subscriber, you'll also enjoy ad-free listening, early access to select episodes, and exclusive never-before-heard bonus content. Feed your true crime obsession. Subscribe to iHeart True Crime Plus today, exclusively on Apple Podcasts. Ah, we are back. So, in 2019, as I've noted a couple of times, the Houston Chronicle and the San Antonio Express News published a massive expose of sexual abuse within the Southern Baptist Convention. One of their articles, and this stuff's still coming out, dealt entirely with sex abuse cover-ups within the mission board. In response to this, a series of new proposals were put forward to finally do what survivors had been urging them to do for 20 fucking years. 